I'm going to interrupt my normal playthroughs for a quick news brief on Eco. Version 10.0 is coming out and designer John Krajewski put out a newsletter that deep inside had some very interesting mentions that went a little deeper than just the surface game features. So I'm going to hit those highlights and unpack some of those more hidden details. In this newsletter, John provided a lot of information, and I'm not going to go over everything in detail, but I am going to dive a little deeper into just a few things that seem to have big implications, because this is a major release of Eco with a lot of changes. So let's give each of these features its due. First, there are two features that are more of minor interest, but still kind of cool. They're going to be putting out a Twitch plugin that will allow Twitch viewers to interact with people streaming Eco and have some degree of interaction. There's more improvements in facial animations for voiceover and faceover IP, which is fun. But in reality, I think players spend most of their time heads down with a pickaxe or shovel and also rarely look at their own characters front on in third person. So it's a cool feature when you're using proximity chat with other players in the game. I'm just not sure how much this will really get seen. Now on to some more of the impressive features. Boats. Yes, I said boats are finally making their way into Eco. We the community have been teased about boats for at least a couple years, but now the wait seems to be over. So let's break this one down. The post says that we'll be getting boats from rowboats to industrial barges. This language of from and to would suggest that there's some boats in between. Maybe one other boat, maybe two, maybe three or more. We just don't know, but I think it's a pretty good guess that there will be at least one boat positioned between those two. And if we take a clue from the land vehicles where we have a cart, small or large, a powered cart, a steam truck, and a regular truck, that's four vehicles. So they may plan a similar progression and holding capacity for the boats. It would make sense. They talk about new dock blocks and placement systems. Both of these are a bit of a mystery and I don't see a reason why a player couldn't build their own dock and exchange goods off a boat to a chest or stockpile. So I think this dock block has an entirely different use. I'm theorizing here, but I believe a person will be able to use a boat to load their cart or truck onto the boat and use it like a ferry across open water. If that's the case, then a special dock would probably be needed to do a kind of game managed attaching or hooking of the boat onto the dock so the player can safely drive off the boat and onto the boat. That's my guess anyway. Otherwise, I don't see a great use for a special dock block. This idea of using boats as a ferry also feeds into the prior note about there being a few different kinds of boats. You'd need one shaped and configured a little different to move vehicles around. The boats also got us thinking recently on dad speed about limiting bridge development over large open waters to encourage the use of boats for cross-continent transport of goods. I don't know, maybe you only allow tunnels completely under the ocean, or a person can use a ferry. We honestly have no idea what we'll do with it. But Dad Speed definitely likes to try different things and experiment. So I'm sure we'll come up with something that keeps boats relevant for the long game. The last little phrase though also plays into this idea of potentially there being some in-game restrictions to swimming and needing boats. I don't know what the new swimming system is. Either you swim or you don't, but Maybe now it'll use tons of calories, or maybe the sharks in the water will be super aggressive, or maybe there's an exhaustion factor that will keep you from swimming more than short distances without having to rest. Who knows? But the fact that it's mentioned within the same paragraph as the boats leads me to believe there's some relationship between boats and swimming. There's also a refactor of the water physics, I believe, that plays into both the boats and swimming. However, they didn't talk about that. 
so I don't want to start projecting too far into the unknown. There may well be some other things going on with water and pollution transmission, crop influence and the like, but it's best to wait and hear about that. I think if there was a big change to those areas, they'd have made a special mention about it. The next feature, by itself, is rather unremarkable. It's the ability to take pictures of yourself and surroundings and use these pictures on signs and various things in the game. Nice, but to me, it's not the most important part. The second part of this paragraph is the key one. It'll also be part of the new culture system we're building. You'll be able to make a museum of pictures from other players around the globe to create culture points for the new settlements system. Yes, they're introducing a culture system. Just hold on to that notion a moment as it feeds directly into the next big game feature. Settlements. It's finally here. We'll now be able to separate governments into three layering parts. Towns, countries, and federations. Countries are composed of multiple towns, and federations are composed of multiple countries. Each has their own overlapping governments, laws, taxes, treasuries, and so on. What's meant by that is that if a country makes a law, all the towns for that country are impacted. But the town can still make its own town-based laws. This is exactly the kind of gameplay so many players have wanted, because it opens up even more gameplay. We've tried on our server, with some success, to create a very rudimentary separation of the world into four townships, and let them each have some degree of autonomous law system while still falling under the worldwide federal laws. It is possible, but it is quite difficult, and there's lots of little hurdles to have to overcome. And there are limitations to how far you can really stretch the pre-10.0 government and law systems. This new in-game mechanic should make this much easier, and I think it will be a great opportunity for small groups of friends to come in, form a town, grow their own little economic empire, and try to spread their influence over larger and larger regions. It creates a larger, longer-term goal in the game, which is one reason why I really like it. I also use the word influence. That picture-taking thing that somehow granted culture points? Well, that is directly part of this new government. And even though there is still a little mystery around exactly how it'll work, culture systems in most games allow you to do things or influence things in broader and broader spheres. In Eco, this may mean something like taxes or rebates are based on the influence of your culture. The greater your culture, the wider reach of your taxation base, either physically on the map or by the number of players. Three towns might all be competing via their culture to influence the ability to create a country in a given area. It's a very cool concept, and it doesn't end there. Properties, which have traditionally been tied to skill scrolls and learning those skills, is being transformed by the new government system so it's somehow based on population. So I assume that being able to gain property is somehow influenced by being part of one of these communities. We don't know exactly again how this is being broken down, and I hope it doesn't quickly form a single game meta where it only makes sense for everyone to form one giant town conglomerate. But I'm excited to see what it brings. And fortunately, for the player that likes to have their own space and play a better part from others in Eco, the New World Settlement system can be turned off in the server settings, allowing folks to play the more traditional form of Eco. We just need to wait and see exactly how much of that system is affected. For me, it's hard to imagine a setting that completely untangles everything, including properties, but maybe we'll see. This version has been long awaited by the eco community, almost as long as the long dark in my latest playthrough. So if you want to see more, check out the demos on these game features the devs are running through February and March, which I have linked in the video description below. Till next time, take care and I'll be talking to you later.